Hey guys, Thomas from Team Sakurazo here. Come at you guys with another Yu-Gi-Oh! Mark Watch for you guys today. And we have so many buyouts to go over that it's not even funny. And all you guys have to do is like that video. Let's see if we get 100 likes again on this video. Subscribe. 32% of you guys are not subscribed to watch the videos. And I am tired of asking. I'm just going to start hunting people down, alright? And you don't want me to do that. So let's save each other some time, alright? and some money you know with these marco watches and subscribe all right <laughs> jokes aside though thank you to all my youtube channel members though i always appreciate you guys if you guys want to support the channel consider being a youtube channel member check out my sponsors use my affiliate link for tcg player if you're buying anything on the site it includes everything not just Yu Gi Oh. check out tapio cards use code saki five percent off you get cool deck boxes sleeves backpacks over sleeves hats plushies keychains and more and hey using code Saki, you get yourself five percent off awesome site go check it out if you're looking for some cool Yu Gi Oh merch and then check out whatnot use my link down in the description below you get 15 dollars on your first purchase when you register and you can buy more things than just card games or you can buy any card game you can buy shoes it's pretty dope so register with my affiliate link down in the description below it helps out the channel and then we're going to get right into this. Also, I'll be doing some more giveaways soon. I'm going to be giving away more ulties because you guys loved me giving away Rock Vanquishers. I'm The worst part is, is I got sick and tired of pulling it, and I pulled one immediately after during that week at Locals. I was so done. I was so done. But Nightmare Magician here from Duelist Nexus. These are eight nine dollars now these were three or four and this card was good because when it battles you take your opponent's monster and then once per turn it's our damage up if another monster attacks you destroy a card on the field right so this is this card will help clear the board and net you good card advantage the problem is is that illusion is a new type and they don't have enough so this while this card was good People were smart enough not to let it drop to like $1 because it's always been like 3 to like $4. But now it's about 9 bucks. Duelist Nexus though was definitely a set that while it wasn't terrible price-wise, there were always cards that kept popping in and out of that set that were good. And will still. It kind of felt like Duelist Nexus had cards that were not ready for the time. Frame Gear Beta, now shouts to Fresh off the press. He said, yo, you guys should get this for Tenpai when it was like $2. And you're up 5x, $10. But I'm going a, I'm to a keep it real. They do go up to 25 Granted, the sales history here is showing, you know, 5 to $10 here. So I don't think this card could sell for 20 But hey, 10 to 15 I think that, that it could sell for that. It's a solo print out of High Speed Riders. That's a very old set. This is to stop Tempai, and I do want to revisit my take on Tempai. Before that, thank you to those in the last Mark Watch who corrected me on the Dragon Maid buyout. You know, sometimes I don't know, so that's why I ask you guys, and that's what I love, because you guys correct me. People, other people had that question. You know, they go to the comment section. They're like, oh, this is why Pale, uh, Dragon Maid Laundry got bought out. It's because of Paleo. And I always love that. So thank you guys so much for when I have like a question or I'm not too sure about something. Just letting me know. I always love spreading actual info around. I'm not what like some of these other YouTubers where they get like corrected and they take that as a personal offense. I don't know why they're like that, but it's just so soft to me. It's really annoying how that's like the mainstream thing too. Like I personally can't comprehend that, but thank you to those people who did that. But I want to revisit my thought on Tempai. Now, while I'm not really sold on Tempai still, I still think that it doesn't feel, it feels frustrating to play, feels frustrating to play against. And I know they are getting more support. So I, I would, that's why I said, hey, L, post LED. I think that if people are going to start siding the whole engine and they're playing a different deck like Labyrinth, et cetera, et cetera, that could definitely change the game because it's like, well, now if I'm playing, if they decide to play Tempai and I decide to go first, well, hey, they get a guaranteed going second and they can wipe me game two. So now Tempai kind of has this mind game thing with the side deck. And I think that's going to be a bad and a good thing because I do love when people side uh, boards, like, change up your strategy it's nothing new to Yu-Gi-Oh, and i think that's really really cool but i still think that it, the deck by itself like solo like not running in the side deck side deck tempai cool is like not a bad strategy at all i think it's quite good but like just main deck tempai is just mm. but yeah 20 dollars on your super today woohoo fabled lurry dt2 uh people were buying this for and this is the uh what's called 
the uh, apparel rare. This is insane. Three hundred dollars, and these are selling for twenty bucks. But the fact that someone put one copy up for three hundred, Space City Gaming. Yeah, you gotta be on like the moon to think this is gonna sell for three hundred dollars. Yeah, no, thank you. These super rares, ten dollars right now and it's really funny because uh someone told me in the, my comment section that this got bought out and i know the person irl and i'm just like oh man y'all y'all want to mess with me but yeah shouts to you cody appreciate you uh sometimes uh, but yeah fable lurry ten dollars getting bought out here remember this card is infinite right so as long as it's discarded you special summon it and it keeps on doing that so yeah straight up ten dollars the commons here are like threes here. So if you have Hidden Arsenal Chapter 1 bulk, which if you're smart enough, you probably don't because you didn't buy this awful set. I ended up getting displays for 15. So I said, sure, why not? But I still haven't cracked them because I'm just not in a rush. Ready Rose Dragon. Someone went in here and like cleared. I think it was, yeah, 1,196. So someone was like, you know what? This is good enough to get 1,200 of. Which is insane because imagine if this card goes to five dollars and you just have five six. I mean, granted, you have to get rid of twelve hundred of the same card, mind you. But hey, they're dollars, two dollars here, so crazy. OGs right here are like nine, ten dollars. I also like to. I don't like calling it Ruddy, by the way. I like to call it Bloody Rose Dragon. That's what it was in the OCG. I don't know why they had to call it Ruddy and ruin the name. If you're an older subscriber, you'll know that every time I went over this card, I called it Bloody Rose, and it was just mad annoying for them to call it Ruddy, because Bloody Rose Dragon sounds way cooler. And I do appreciate, though, with Tempai that you can run this, Moonlit, and Black Rose. I mean, just amazing to me, honestly. Uh, Gadget Trio. Now, LED -E was very low for some of its core centuries because this set caters, it spreads itself too thin with a lot of things. And some of these cars have been going crazy. Now, uh, you got Gadget Trio here at 32, 60, 95. I mean, got some cheaper copies at 32, 40 here, but the sales history indicate about 25s. This is a great looking core century. I mean, it has all the gadgets. People love that. I like how this card looks personally, but I don't think it should be worth this much. I think this kind of goes very crazy, honestly. Um, I do like it's a fact that it sets Hidden Fortress, though. I think that's cool, but... Valmonica of Destruction. Now, this card is going kind of haywire. You got one here for 47, and then you got 72. Then you got 80, 90 here. So if you want your Valmonica card Century, you got one here for the cheap. People really want to play this. Like, the fact that they got their best card this late is absolutely insane. In fact, these Valmonica CRs are going insane. We have Valmonica right here at about 47 here, but 15 listings isn't a lot. Skelta, about 48, going up to 60. 15 listings isn't a lot. 11 listings, 37. This thing probably goes up to, yeah, 80. It takes, like, two people to want to core this, and then it's done. And then you got the Piano here, which... This CR looks gorgeous. I ended up pulling it in my case, and it was like $19, $20. I'm like, I can't sell it. it looks, I actually want one of these for the collection anyway, because the CR looks gorgeous. And I saw this price. I'm like, nah, this is just dumb. Uh, so, yeah, $80 here for this. Then you have Minerva, the Athenian Light Sworn here. I think I, I said that correctly. $90, $93. I think that this is one of the better quarter centuries to pick up. I think that with 43 listings, it might start going lower, maybe to 60. It's definitely a card to watch out for by far. I think it could go lower, hopefully. And a lot, but yeah, I don't know. I think if it goes lower, people are going to start buying it out. If you think you can find a good price on this, like let's say you get this for 70, might it could go to 70, but it might not be a bad idea to pull the trigger now at that price. Definitely a beautiful looking card. Vados here is about 55 58 I want this deck to do something so bad. You guys don't understand. This card looks amazing for 50 Necro Valley. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but basically it's all bought out. You guys see that I put November 2022 here, and you're probably thinking, huh, why did he put that there? It was to remind myself that that is when Magnificent Mavens came out, which is when we got the Ultra and, you know, Secret Pharaohs Rare. 
And I, I said to people, this card needed a reprint so badly back then, and Konami just did not give it to us. They were like, no, we're going to give you this special rarity, but we're not going to reprint a base rarity in the set. And I was pissed off about that. That was like my one of my biggest gripes about Mavens was that, and the fact that Konami released Ishizu cards, right? That's kind of why I hate the product, personally. And I don't, I didn't care about anything in there, as well as like the rarity, the newer rarities. In fact, I'm gonna be real. I don't think I liked Mavens much at all. I I'm gonna like now that time's passed. I kind of look back on. It, I kind of hate the set. Uh, just felt like overall disrespectful to the game in all fronts. But low listings on your Necro Valleys here. This card needed a reprint since 2022, and people were wanting a Necro Valley reprint in earlier 2022. I just remember the time where Mavens came out. People were like, "Oh, finally, we might be getting one" because they saw the new the higher rarity, and we didn't get it. So this card. It's needed a reprint for years. Konami, please hurry the hell up and give us a reprint. Like, this is why they're just slacking. Ultis are 92 here, 93, 95. They go up to 150, 170. I got one when it was around an okay price. I think probably like 70 for one of my friends because his favorite deck is Gravekeepers. And, you know, you could play it in Edison. I don't think it's that good in Edison, but like... It's his favorite deck, and he has a format where he can at least play the deck and see turn four or five. So I think that's cool. Plus, it shuts off Plague there. I know that. That's cool. Uh, now, Bestials. These are going Haywire. 240 for Lubellion. Jewish Worms a solid 50. Your Secrets are like 27, 28. Yeah, like 27, 28, 6 here. Then you've got your Mega Packs at 20. And then I actually want to go without photos here because... They're, oh man, I guess I can't. They're clogging it up. Uh, you got Bistial Jewels from here at 17 going up to $20 for your Bistial Jewels Worms. That is a lot. I mean, this card was as cheap as 8 to 10, but I told people that at 8 to 10, you, this, you should probably get this and get rid of the Super because they were roughly around the same price. Super is about 11 here. Secrets are eight dollars for sarnier's supers are like what fours fives here that's a lot and then how much is magna hut secrets magna huts are going up too you know what three dollars here this was a dollar ish card i said hey magna hut secrets at dollar ish is not bad to grab especially if they ever somehow put this card at two which i really hope not i don't like bestials for the game i just think that ev that having a quick effect banish special then a search on your opponent's turn with a mo the monster on board and it's a dragon in dark it just too stupid to me but yeah bistils are going up they're great this format and they'll probably be better the next format as well honestly like i see bistils being a overall problem to the game for a while but you guys know that's nothing new if you guys haven't hit the like button yeah i don't know what you're doing and remember let me know what cards i'm going over next mark watch in the comment section below here the orange light now these are getting bought out because man i thought about the was it it wasn't Vol Monica, but it was there's like a fairy deck running around. I can't think of the it, oh Melodious. That's what it was. Melodious are using this eight dollars uh for this. I actually considered this a voiceless voice. Cause I'm like, well, we play fairy, so how bad would it be? Especially if I threw like an uh a Christia in the build, and then I was like, nah, nah, nah. It I, I play tested it online a little bit and it just it did not feel good. Uh, Herald of Orange Light, though, is 5 to $8. This could be in Rarity Collection, too, I think. But people want the card now, so who cares, right? If it's not in Rarity Collection, too, oh, man, was this good. But if you got this at dollar to $2 when I told you guys, I mean, good job. That's all I have to say. I still think it's going to be in Rarity Collection, too, though. If it's not, again, wow. Enemy Controller Ultis are 34 40 bucks here today. Lady Labyrinth, I want to go over some high rarity Labyrinth cards. So the OG right now is 180. I think that's pretty good. It does have the reprint here, which I don't really like because these came in within like a year. These are 73, 75. Now it's hard for me to tell you to get the OG at let's call it 180 here when you could get a set for 210, roughly 220, right? So it's like, oh, you might get the lower rarity one, but 25th still looks cool, and you get a set, right? And then if you find a set in person, oh, man, you could probably get for like 200, uh, and, and then it's just great. You know what I mean? So it's hard for me to really tell you get the OG stuff, especially because 
Labyrinth has this big problem with not matching. Like, for example, you have Starlights and then you have Quarter Centuries, right? And this matches the, the deck with the Quarter Centuries more than this matches. So it's hard for me to actually say to get this OG one. Uh, even though it looks better than me. Like, it really, really does. Uh, but I guess you have to make your decision at the end of the day. I would rather rock a set of these uh, than this if I was playing the deck to make it look pretty. Just because... It's more bang for my buck for this, even though... Plus, because they're so bang for the buck, these most likely could go up to like 100, 110, 120. This could probably hit 200 in the meantime. So you have like a $20 increase here. You have like a $30 increase here. And then you have this set, so it's easier to get rid of. That's just kind of my logic with it, even though I usually tell people to get originals. Welcomes are 115 today, but this card bounces between like 90 and like 140 all the time. Areas, this card's finally going up 80, goes up to about 100 here. So, if you got them when they were like 70, good job. This card has never really spiked up like crazy, though, uh, which is pretty funny because the amount of people who want high rarity labyrinth stuff is just everywhere. CRs are, you know, 42 here, goes up to 55. You got area CRs here, they're about 70, goes up to 75. And then you got Big Welcome Labyrinth. These are 30 bucks. You're going up to $35. This card will age slowly but surely. And people still need this card. The Ultras are 15 still, which I don't get, man. I really don't get. But that Big Welcome was probably like our the biggest come up the Shadows ever had. So we get the Ultras at 2-3. They went up to $15 to $30. Like the amount of people, like to this day, I hear about the come up of Big Welcome Labyrinth in my comment section. Like it, it's insane. If you remember this... Good job. I forgot to mention, I will also be having a 5 cards out of your trade binder quite soon. I'm also working on a channel member video as well. I didn't give you guys the live stream Tuesday because I was just too tired and busy. So if you guys were wondering where that went, uh, that's where. I like to take it off sometimes. So maybe I'll rearrange it though and just have like a midday market watch. I do want to try that. Uh, possibly like a Wednesday middle of the day thing. I don't know if you guys would like that or not, but maybe like 5, 6... Now, Ancient Fairy, this card is now seeing more play. Uh, it's very good to actually disrupt this against certain decks, which is really nice. And I checked out on the OG Ultra, and these are like four and a half for an unlimited lightly play. Now, I always love having that first edition on it, but I mean, it, the fact that I can rock an OG for just a simple $5... Like, that doesn't even get you much at McDonald's anymore. And this card's so old. I always We always remember seeing any version of that card at double digits, especially the OG. I can, You can't go wrong with an Unlimited Ultra, but, like, first heads are great as well. $12. I would just get both. I mean, more bang for your buck. Why choose? Like, I'll take the first head at this price, and they want to give me a deal on the Unlimited 2. I'm cool with that. It does go up to 25 here quite quickly, but... About 12s here for your first eds. I think it's not bad to get this first ed. I mean, remember, it's a Cyan Dragon. It's OG. Definitely a first ed card that if you don't have it right now, I would definitely grab it. I actually want to check out the Ghost Rare. We have the Quarter Century, too, uh, right over here, which is, you know, $22. Went up. Cool. Uh, I went over that recently. The Ghosts are 330 for a light play. Goes up to 580 I actually had one of these at one point, funny enough, and I got for super cheap. Like, you guys don't even know how. I can't. If I say how much I got for, you guys will probably be mad, but I'm going to say it anyway. I got this for 20 bucks, right? Maybe it was 10, but it was like max $20 about during COVID time. And it was just such an amazing snag for me. And then about $600 here, but the unlimiteds here are i think at personally at an amazing price you see they go up to 110 here but 74 for a light play that's gorgeous i actually really really like that i personally would just rock an unlimited at first at prices because if i could get like five now granted there's they go up to 100 real quick but let's say they were 70 and a first set's like 330 if i can get basically five copies um of ancient fairy ghost rare for the price of a first dead i feel like i'd rather just get the unlimiteds at that point just because it'd be cool to fill up a page with them and while first dead is where it's at uh i would be like happy with just like one first dead and then a bunch of unlimiteds like i won't need a set of first eds i can have 
one for set and the rest could be unlimited but that's just me with that being said leave a like if you guys enjoyed subscribe and just, uh, we're almost at 5k subs which is like really exciting for me personally so i'll see you guys in the next video peace